Okay, so we start chapter 4 right here in workplace 20, and what we notice is that we're talking about trigonometry. Okay, that's a big word, and <clears throat> you've probably heard of this word before, but when we talk about trigonometry, we're talking about triangles, and specifically, we're talking about right triangles. Right triangles are triangles that have a 90 degree in them, okay? So I've done some drawing here already, but a 90 degree angle is this right here. That's called a right angle. So a right triangle has a right angle in it. And there's some special um, ratios that are attached to right triangles. So we've talked a little bit about this already in, in class earlier today. Uh, and you hopefully would have seen this in other math classes before. So for any angle in a right triangle, and we're not talking about the 90. We don't really ever consider the 90. But we talk about either this angle or this angle. And for each of these two angles, there is a set ratio when you talk about the length of the opposite side, the length of the hypotenuse side, and the length of the adjacent side. And those special ratios have special names. So for example, the sine of theta is given by the ratio between the opposite side length of the angle, so opposite, divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, and when you divide those two numbers, that number, that or that ratio of those two numbers, is what the sine ratio refers to. And when we don't write it like this, sine of theta, instead we write it as sine theta, like this. <coughs> and of course, as a reminder, theta is just a variable for an angle. Whenever you see a theta, 99%, it's talking about some kind of angle in math. Okay? Now, there are others, obviously the cosine and the tangent as well. So we did a little bit of work talking about this um, ratio, just kind of off, off camera here, I guess. But here they are right here, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Notice that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite side divided by adjacent. And here we get our famous memory mnemonic, our memory saying, so ka toa. Very important. Helps us to remember what these ratios are. Okay? So we've done a little bit of work already on um, uh, finding out different angles and sides and stuff, ratios. So let's take a look at what they're trying to teach us here in the first section, and that is to solve triangles. Okay. So what is solving a triangle? It says it means finding all of the missing parts. So that is, and you can write this in your margin, that's all the sides and angles. Okay all the sides and all the angles. So it's important for us to understand a couple things before we get into solving triangles. Um, and we did some of these questions and I'm just going to go over these questions uh, again that we did earlier. So if you want to find the sine of theta here, which was the question for one and two, this is theta. And to find the sine of theta, you take the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse length and you get five over eight. Over here, the opposite is 2, and the hypotenuse is 5. Therefore, sine of theta is 2 over 5. We did, this, we did the same things for cosine theta, and this is a bit messy here right now. But one of the things that we did realize is that we have to use Pythagoras' theorem sometimes to find a missing side in the triangle. So we did that a lot in Chapter 3, so you should be aware of how to do that. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And of course, this right here, these two are A and B, and then the hypotenuse is always C. So we had to find the hypotenuse before we could find sine for this question. All right. Now on your, now we made these little foldable, right? This, this foldable, and we put some information on here, and this one's not quite done, but we put some information that is going to help us solve some problems. So here's the type of question that you don't have yet on your book. So I'll get you to write this down somewhere in the margin. And this is going to be solve for 
the angle theta. Solve for theta. Okay? So if we do this together, and we're going to draw a right triangle here. This is the 90, obviously. Let's make this theta. And let's just set this to, oh, let's say this is 7, and this is going to be 5 over here. Okay. 7 and 5. Now, I'm going to give you those two, and I'm going to say find theta. Now, actually, we have enough information right now to solve for theta. Because we want to write an equation with only one missing piece, or one variable. And the variable we're going to use is theta. That's what we're solving for. So what side is 7 compared to theta? That's right. It's the opposite side. Very good. What side is 5 compared to theta? Adjacent. It is. It's the adjacent side. And of course, this would be the hypotenuse. But if we're given the opposite and the adjacent, which trig function do you think we're going to be able to use or to write an equation with? So opposite is O. OK, I see an O there and an O there. And this is adjacent. So which one has TOA? This one right here. So that means we're going to be able to write this. Tangent of theta, because I don't know what it is, so I'll just write as theta, equals opposite over adjacent. So everyone see that? So that's how we start. We have to set up an equation with a trig ratio in it. And use, obviously, some sides that you're given or sides that you can find somehow. So that's why I chose the tangent, because I'm given 7 and I'm given 5. Now, this is the tricky part. This is the tricky part. If you get your calculator out, okay, so you've got your calculators there with you. Do you see their tan button right here? Okay. Okay. So what we could do, this is what we could do, I suppose. Um... Actually, you know what? Let's change. Make sure yours, your calculator is in degrees. Okay, so you won't have a calculator like mine probably, but you'll have a regular calculator, and it should say a D on the screen somewhere or a D E G. If it has R or G R A D or something like that, you got to change it to degrees. So does everyone see a little D on their screen? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, everybody. Little d. Okay, so when you're in degrees, watch this, watch this. What is 7 over 5 as a decimal? What's 7 over 5? That is actually what? 7 divided by 5. Okay, that's 1.4. Okay, 1.4. Good. So we could do kind of trial and error and just kind of start to guess what angle would give us a tan of 1.4. This is how we do it. I'd say, okay, what about tan of, I don't know, let's say um, 20. Tan of 20. That gives us, ooh, 0 0.3. Boy, I need quite a bit of a bigger number, so I'm going to try a bigger angle. What about, what's the tangent of 50, I wonder? Ooh, getting close. See that? 1.19. Now, I could try, uh, I could keep trying, I could go 68, and, oh, that's too much. So, what's uh, tan of 60? Uh, ooh, pretty close now. So I could keep guessing this way, but you know what? There is a way that you don't have to do trial and error like this, okay? And the calculator can do this for you. This is how you do it. You have to hit second function tan, and so that you get this little tan to the negative one. So do you guys remember on your little foldable sheet there, I got you to write this tan to the negative one? Okay, and then what you do is you do tan to the negative one of your number or of your uh, ratio. So I'm going to do seven divided by 5. And so what you're asking the calculator to do is to find the angle that has a tan ratio of 7 over 5. That's what you're asking the calculator to do. And when you hit enter, look at this. 54 point, look at how exact it is. That's exactly the angle that will give you exactly 1.4. So let's test it out. Tan of 54.4623 um, 2, 2, 1. So if I use that exact decimal, look at this. I pretty much get 1.4. So that's how you get the calculator to do it. So again, to find the angle, you would go tan 
to the negative 1, that second function, tan, of either 7 over 5, or you could put your 1.4 in there, and that will give you theta. So in this case, theta is equal to 54 point, and we'll say 54.5. Okay? Just wait. Before you put your stuff away, don't put your stuff away just yet. Let's go back to your notes here real quick. And in page number, or let's see, the second, the second page. Um, okay. So I want you to, before tomorrow, I want you to do question number one and two. Okay? Question number one and two, page 200. You guys got that? Okay? Question number one and two. Make sure it's done. All right. Thank you.